Who's the one? Pernak here with another episode for you. First off, I'm going to tell you, this press, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. It works. It does its job, but you need to do things to it. You need to make it work a little better. Um, it's just, it's not the greatest press, and most of it is mostly from the engineering standpoint of said press. Um, it's just little things that they did to cut the cost, which I understand, to make it less expensive so you could use an inexpensive press. But many of those things that they did to cut the corners actually make it more difficult to use. And let's take a look at the press itself. Right, let's take a look at the press itself. So, it has its steel construction. It's a black painted steel, a few bits and brass pieces, probably iron, other things like that. It's got a steel press bed that's not real thick as you can see there, and it does have a etching felt on it. Remove the etching felt, you can see the size of the press bed right here. It's not very large. The bed itself is ten and a half inches wide which means this here is probably about 10 inches right here. So you can easily do a nine by 12 print with this. You might be able to get away with a 10 inch print um, if it's like right to size and everything on it. But this is not meant for big ones. It does have two screws right here that as you turn them, move the press bed or move the top roller here up and down. And remove the bed. And as you can see, there are the two rollers. The top one is smooth, the bottom one is highly textured. And I believe the texture was originally meant to make the grab the bed so it can move through here more easily. And if you look at the side here, the handle. It's a simple straight handle and it's a direct drive, meaning this handle on what it's attached to, this rod right here, is completely attached to this and as you turn it once around, it moves this once around. Now most higher end presses are, <coughs> excuse me, are offset, which basically means this area right here has a little gear on it. And then there'll be another gear mounted here where your handle is mounted. And your handle will move the big gear in turning the small gear. It's meant, uh, yeah, right here. This is normally what they'll do with higher end presses. It makes it easier and less force to push the bed through and everything. So you don't feel like you're using as much force or strength to use this. So you do have to have a decent amount of strength to use this sometimes to get everything through because it is direct drive. But luckily the handle is long enough. I would say it's a good 10 inches long to do that. And it does have, it comes out and it flares and it's nice like this. I've used other small little etching presses, namely Richardson's Baby Press. And theirs is, well, it does have two handles that come out on both sides. They're kind of small and it's just a, a knob on the end, uh, like a little round knob. And then you just turn it. This is kind of nice because it does make it a little easier. Let's talk about the things that I had to do to make this press work better. One, you can see right here, there are little L brackets that I had to attach to a piece of flat MDF board that I have then clamped down to my workbench. And I do this because this thing is very light. And I found myself, as I'm using it, trying to keep one hand on here and keep it centered in the middle of everything and turn the crank at the same time. That was not 
anything important. That was just the uh, mounting tripod for the camera. So that was one of the first things that I did to improve this. The second one was I started using this non-stick shelf liner. I started putting this on the bed. I actually put this below the bed and then put the bed on and put another piece on top. This was meant, which actually did improve the bed press. It made the bed go through much more easily because I had something to grip on. But the problem I found was this kept going through and then as it would get to this side with the press spread, it would start to bunch up and then you couldn't move the bed through anymore. And after that, I decided to take another route. I used a piece of plywood, which I then cut down to size to my 10 and a half inches. So it's much longer, which is nice because it makes it seem like it's easier to use. And plus because it's wood, this texture, this rough little texture down there, is more apt to grab this and keep the bed from slipping. Because one of the major complaints I saw on reviews of this thing was people said they would put things through it and the bed would not move. Like it would just, you could keep turning this like you can see now and nothing's happening. That's because the, the top roller is not down far enough right now. But they said they would have a lot of tech a lot of tension in it, a lot of pressure, and they still couldn't get it to move. The wood helps with that quite a bit. Now, that's also part of the problem with this press are the rollers themselves. They're too small. So most presses have rollers that are at least twice the size of this. The, uh, the one I'm familiar with is the Richardson Baby Press has much larger rollers. So the major problem we have is that when you're trying to push this through right here, because it is so, it's a very large, steep angle right in here, many of your things, even with the non-slip, it just sits. It will hit right here and just sit. You can't it just, you, you continue to spin the thing. I mean, you might even have the whole bed go through and everything like this. And then your print or your plate or your linoleum or your paper and all that stuff just stay right on the top and just keep sliding off the bed. And that is, it's due to the nature of the press. Now, if this roller was at least twice its size, I guarantee you this thing would work much more beautifully. But... Like I said, it's a very inexpensive press that only costs about $225. Hence why it is so inexpensive. The other thing that I had to do is I used some uh, powdered graphite and WD-40 to oil this up because it is very, very, very squeaky. I did not like the squeakiness of it. And most of the other presses, you can see this right here, uh, have marks on the side of them that tell you how high everything is. So what I ended up doing was taking some paper rulers that I found online. So these are millimeter increments, laminated them with packing tape, and then glued them down with a spray adhesive. It still doesn't work the best. What I found works the best is when I'm using this is to adjust these all the way up. And you want to do them both at the same time for those of you who've never used a press. So you want to have these both move. So I'll move them all the way up till I can't make this top roller move up any further. And then evenly with two hands, one here and one here, at the same time, twist the thing down. 
that's one of the nice things about this is you can kind of read the sides of it and then know where your mark is so you don't have to do that. I still do that even with the marks. It's just easier. The other thing is you can see the screw right here. It's very coarse threaded. And that means one turn of this knob up here, this adjuster, means this move, the roller moves a lot. Which is not something that I like. It means it's very difficult to do minute adjustments on it. And when you have to do a minute adjustment, instead of like doing a whole quarter turn or a half turn like this, you're doing like little tiny turns like this to get it. And it makes it a little bit harder because sometimes as you get these both turned in the same direction right here, sometimes you hit one and it starts to move it. I mean, you always want to make sure these are pointing in like that so that way you're not worrying about that. All right, a few other things I did want to talk about that I did not mention, but I should, is there's not a whole lot of clearance right here through this. Now, I have a mounted linoleum block here. This is the same one I did to use my Christmas cards. Now, I can make it fit through here with no bed. It's the only way this will fit through. So I, and I can't use an etching felt on top of it either. So I have to mount the paper, or place the paper directly on top after I've inked it, and then feed it through. That's the only way you can use a mounted linoleum block on here. Other thing I was going to talk about, and it's because of the small rollers here, is that Oftentimes, I did find myself having to get everything close to the edge of this and sometimes adjusting the height just a little bit to move up and then giving it a little, I'll use my hip and give it a little hip bump as I am turning this to make it go through with some linoleums or anything, really, sometimes. Uh, I found it less of a problem with... Uh, plates like dry point plates and things like that but you still need to give it a little assistance and that is again like I said it's due to the nature of these small little rollers if they were larger rollers with a larger diameter they would things would roll under them much more easily or through them well everyone that's the video for today I hope you enjoyed this review Hopefully it helps you and assists you if you're going to purchase one of these or thinking about it. Also remember, help me out. Give me a thumbs up down below. Or you can subscribe to my channel too. Uh, both would be great actually. Uh, also remember, if you want to follow me along my Tumblr or my Instagram or my Twitter, the links are down below. Until next time everyone, see ya. Bye.